coach is here. We're going to go straight to questions. Coach, to your right, okay, on the second row. All right. Hi, Caroline Grace, WAFF out of Huntsville, Alabama. Coach, I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off here. You're going into the season with one of the toughest schedules in the country. Yeah. How has not having the quarterback situation settled affected the mental preparation of your team? You know, you know, not too much. Uh, we do have one of the toughest schedules uh, in college football, but uh, it's not a shock to our system. I probably said that the last, you know, three or four years. And, you know, we're really looking at it, um, you know, as a challenge, man, an opportunity, a great opportunity, and really hadn't got too much into who our starting quarterback is. You know, one thing that I can tell you, I feel like we got a chance to be really good around our quarterback, not just offensively, but defensively, and really be able to help them grow as they grow and get experience with the schedule that we have. So there really hadn't been too much stress about that. Uh, we opened up our season against Oregon, uh, one of the top teams in the country. People are picking them to win their division. Some are picking the final four, and they got supposedly the best quarterback in the country too. So that'll be a great challenge, but we're really looking forward to it. Coach, to your left, standing up. Hello, Coach. Good morning. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV. Um, this not winning at LSU since 1999, has it been hard to kind of make sense of that or been snake bit some years or funny things happen or you go in there obviously this season? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough place to play, but like you said, I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's a long time since winning a game. You know, when you say that, it just really reminds me of the feelings that I had two years ago. That was one of the toughest losses uh, that we've had. Um, you know, in a long time. So, um, you know, we, we're looking forward to going there again. We have a different team. We have an experienced team. Uh, after last year's game, which was really, really tough, the way that that ended and, you know, that really last year's LSU game, I mean, you're, you win that game, you win 10 games. If you don't, it's uphill. And it was kind of one of those games that uh, really we, we need to win. So we'll be very motivated, you know, for that game. To your right, second row. Hey, Coach. Rachel Barbo, Sirius XM. Hey, Rachel. Um, does it invigorate you to be going back to your roots, to being the play caller, yeah. to being it, for it to be on yeah. you? And, and would you share with us the backstory? And was yeah. there any consternation? Was there any thought of, do I do this? Do I yeah. not do this? Will you share the backstory about how you came to that decision? Yeah, you know, I've called plays my whole life. I mean, that's who I am and kind of got me to where I'm at. And then, of course, about three years ago, you start getting advice and encouragement to let somebody else do it. And, of course, you do it. And uh, I'm not real good at staying around watching. And uh, so when Chip Lindsey decided to leave, which Chip Lindsey, an outstanding coach, he will do great at Troy. Uh, and he decided to leave, it just kind of set back like, okay, all right, or am I going to go ahead and hire another offensive coordinator or am I going to do it myself? And just had a lot of uh, prayer and uh, just getting back to being me. And so we did that in the bowl game and it just, the, the light flipped on and uh, just made all the difference in the world. Um, you know, we played really good in, in, our, in our bowl game, but what it did is just, it gives you a great feel. And I think we got a chance to, to really be good on offense again this year and just excited to get back to being me. To your left on the second row here, Coach. What has Coach Dillingham brought to the program? And uh, on the defensive side, talk a little bit about a guy like Jordan Peters and what he can mean to your team this year. Yeah, Jordan Peters, uh, I mean, he was one of our best special teams players last year. Blocked a couple punts and, and everything that goes with that. We're hoping that he recovers from his Achilles injury. He's looking better. Uh, Kenny Dillingham, you know, when I decided that I was going back to calling the plays, I needed to find somebody that was he, at least in the atmosphere of the philosophy. Mike Norvell, the head coach at Memphis, was my former GA. And so he did the exact same job for Mike. Mike's the play caller, and so it was a perfect fit for me. Uh, what he does bring is energy. And what he does bring is he understands our core offense. And in the bowl game, when he was upstairs, it was a really smooth transition. So really looking forward to working with him. Second row, Coach. Quinn Lawson with uh, WFF. Coach, talk about the different styles between the two QBs, Gatewood and Bo Nix, and then how your play calling this yeah. year will affect both of them. Yeah, I don't think there's as much differences as everybody would think. One thing I can tell you is both those guys will be true run threats from the quarterback position. They both can extend plays when things break down, and they both have outstanding arms. So, you know, one thing I will tell you that will be different is our quarterback will be a run threat. And I feel like – well, I don't feel like – I know when the quarterback is a run threat, it changes everything from a defensive standpoint, and it's really a lot easier to call plays too. Third row coach in the middle. 
Coach uh, Jamal Kennedy, WSFA in Montgomery. Uh, you lose Deshaun Davis at the linebacker position as well as others, but you still have seven guys coming back on that side of the ball. Just talk a little bit yeah. about that experience and how you think uh, that's going to help your defense going. Yeah, you, you know, I think it starts with our defensive line. I mean, we got the majority of those guys back. We got some impact players, not just good players. Um, we lost our four seniors, Deshaun being one of them. He was a great player. But, you know, KJ Britt, Chandler Wooten in the spring, they just took the next step. And we really didn't see a lot of drop off uh, from that position. And then the secondary, they're all back but one. And really, it's really senior leaders back there. So uh, feeling really good about our defense. Uh, like I said in the other room, I, I think we got a chance to be uh, the best defense we've had since I've been here. At least we got a chance is what I would say um, with, with the personnel that we have. Coach, to your right against the wall. Hey, Coach, Michael Bradley from Saturday Down South. I'm sure you're getting asked about your quarterbacks basically every day of the offseason, but I'm more interested in your running game. You going back to play calling, how big is the running game getting up back to your standard and getting that offensive line to play up to their yeah. expectations? Uh, how big is that for the upcoming season? Yeah, to, to win a, a championship in this league, uh, it's well documented. You have to be successful at running the football. That will be a big factor. I will say this about our offensive line. They were the least experienced group, I think, in our league last year. They had some growing pains, and they got beat up. Uh, they're all back. They're all seniors. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They got something to prove, and I think that's good. But still, throwing the football, you got to be able to do both to win a championship. And you know, we really believe in throwing the football down the field vertically. We're going to get back to that. And you know, when we have explosive plays, we look like an Auburn offense. We did that in the bowl game. We need to carry that over, you know, this season. Coach, to your left, second row. Coach, it's virtually impossible to control your players seeing everything on social media, and they're going to hear it all. So what's your message to them about the outside noise? You know, um, we got really good leadership. Um, we've got guys that have been around a long time, and we're a real close-knit team. We don't let the outside distract us at all. You know, it really is about the people inside our team room. And we got good leadership, so uh, that doesn't worry me at all. To your left, standing up, please. Coach, this concept of having like a second in-home visit with these defensive guys to convince them to come back, yeah. in and of itself, pretty fascinating. So I'd like you to talk about that. But more specifically, Kevin Steele, your defensive coordinator, and the bond that he kind of has with those guys on defense how much did that specifically play into encouraging these guys to collectively come back, sort of like we saw with Clemson last year in their defensive line? Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of factors. I mean, of course, Rodney Garner had a lot to do with, with a lot of those guys too, our whole coaching staff. But, you know, it's, it's more of when you have an in-home visit for the second time is educating your players. We always want what's best for our players. And, and our goal is just to educate them. You know, I think most of those guys would really want to come back because they've got some unfinished business, you know, on the field. And uh, some of them, uh, you know, want to come back and finish their degree. There's a lot of different things but you know I think that's just something that uh, you'll see more and more of in the future you know it was a really good thing for us and really I think that's the core of our team this year where everything starts is with that group that had an opportunity to leave early that chose to come back and like I said earlier I really feel like uh, they're hungry I feel like they've got something to prove and you don't just come back all right when you got a chance to to really you know, do some special things leaving. You don't come back just to come back. You come back for a reason. And, um, you know, I, I really feel good about that group coming back. Second row coach to your right. Talking about leadership, are there any rising players specifically that show up on and off the field? You know, we got a lot of leaders on our team. Um, uh, we have a high character team. You know, we, we hadn't had a whole lot of off the field issues in, in a long time. and. So, but but it really starts with your with your seniors every year. But you know you want your quarterback to be a leader, and I think whoever wins that position, I think it's going to be. But we've got a lot of different leaders throughout our team. And that's a really great feeling. Coach to your left on the front row, Chris Brees, CBS 42 in Birmingham. One more question on the quarterbacks. In your past history of experience, have you had a preference on when you like to name the starter? around the fall camp area, or is it just a comfortability issue? You always want to sooner rather than later, but I really don't have a timetable. You know, I want it to play out. I don't want it. We're going to put them in different situations to try to uh, figure out who gives us the best chance of winning against Oregon. Uh, and when that time, usually what happens is 
the teammates know, the coaches know, and, and it's it's one of those things. So we'll see how it goes, but in a perfect world, it'd be sooner rather than later. Last two questions, first right here on the left. Okay, another question about the quarterbacks. I'm curious about their football IQ, and more importantly, how Bo Nix conducts himself in the quarterback room, especially with him being as young as he is. Yeah, uh, they're both, I feel like, have a good football IQ. And the thing that really stands out to me is they're hungry to learn. I mean, they're eager to learn, and they're trying to take it in. It's a real healthy relationship, I believe, between those two guys and our team for that matter. And uh, But both those guys are desperate to be the best they can be, to learn as much football as they can. I mean, the reality is, you know, whoever we start in the first game is not going to have any college football experience. And so that's why I kind of go back to we need to be really good around them and let them grow. And, you know, and really try to try to bring them along the right way. But, you know, I feel I feel as good as I can right now with those two guys. You know, the reality of one of those guys leading us out there against Oregon. Your last question is to the right. Guys, there's been a lot of emphasis this offseason on riding for the brand. It seems like the staff is pouring into the player's character. What have you seen this summer from that on and off the field? Yeah, riding for the brand is really simple. It's just putting Auburn first and uh, going back to you know our core values, the Auburn creed. And we've done a lot of – spent a lot of time with our former Auburn players that won championships, get in front of our team, telling them the important things to them about being an Auburn Tiger and brought in Auburn greats, you know, Ronnie Brown, Jason Campbell. You know, there's a lot of different – people and just try to invest in our players and instill them the core values of what makes Auburn special and just kind of going back to, you know, work hard work and playing for the guy beside you. You know, we're in a day and time where everything, whether it's football or anything else, is about me and just trying to really bring – it's been very powerful and uh, just trying to bring everybody back uh, in the same direction. Coach, thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Stay healthy. Good luck. All right.